Great. Okay. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning to everyone joining us from wherever you are. I know we have attendees and panelists from all over the world. So again, wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, this is the Haras, this extraordinary meeting on the United States of America. Uh, today we have a pretty incredible panel. Like I said, calling in from as far as India, how oh, far from me, uh, India, Japan, LA, the Philippines. Uh, and we are very excited. Our topic is we must think as responsible individuals. Uh, it sounds like something that maybe we, we all should just know. Um, but the real emphasis here is who do we trust? It's natural for us as people to look at our celebrities, our influencers, our athletes as heroes, especially our leaders. Uh, but as leaders ourselves, are we putting too much power into the hands of people with an audience? Are we not training them enough? Should we be using them differently? And if so, how? What if they don't align with a positive message for the world? How do we use communities and people in a way that effectively can carry a message uh, that help us achieve our goals? Our panel today is a perfect group to discuss this. Um, first, I'll introduce myself. I am Cynthia Johnson. I am CEO and co-founder of Bell and Ivy. We're a uh, digital marketing and personal branding firm based in the United States. I'm also the uh, co-founder and chair of Wonder Key Collective Inc., uh, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that collects used corporate technology and distributes to uh, foster youth throughout the U.S. So this topic is very important to me. Uh, the structure of today's panel is pretty straightforward. I will introduce each person one at a time, and they will give you a little bit of a background on who they are, why they were chosen for this particular topic, and then their take on it. Once we've gotten through each panelist, I will then open the floor and it'll become a panel discussion. Uh, starting us off today, we have Sandy Kleiman, founder and chief executive officer at Entertainment Media Ventures in LA. Sandy, go ahead and kick us off. Uh, thank you, Cynthia, and thank you, Harassus and Frank and everyone who's brought this together. And I couldn't be more excited to actually address this topic. And, you know, my background, just so you have it, I helped run MGM, talent agency, creative artist agency, where I represented Robert Redford, Robert De Niro, directors like Michael Mann, um, helped build the corporate side of that business, helped run Universal, and and. With Entertainment Media Ventures, we are in strategic consulting, investing across media and entertainment, healthcare, as well as global business. And we spend a great deal of time on innovation, and there has been nothing but innovation in the platforms we're on. Now, again, the, the notion of discussing responsible individuals and thinking like them could not be more timely given the last four years and the presidential election we've just gone through. And without going into politics, we will just talk about the and possibly elsewhere in the world in terms of how people look at uh, diverse thinking and response and what I would consider not just diverse thinking, but the obligation to look at things from all sides. And we have not just celebrities and influencers with followings. We actually have literally everyone posting on Instagram, building their audience and trying to get their point of view across. And I think on this panel, what I'm hoping to do with what is an extraordinarily distinguished group of people is exchange ideas as to how we can instill a sense of um, values and, and, and what I would consider uh, thought leadership for everyone. Everyone needs to delve into inquis being curious, inquisitive, and processing the information they're getting in ways that are something other than simply listening to something that they agree with. Yeah, absolutely. As, or, or someone that they, they agree with, right? The words, <laughs> the words critical thinking need to come back into our vocabulary. Yes, yes. Think, think, thinking for ourselves <laughs> in a lot of ways. 
Uh, thank you so much for the intro. Uh, Avit Gupta, founder and CEO of Yulu in India. I'll pass this off to you now. Thank you, Cynthia. And it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as far as my journey is concerned, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started uh, a mobile internet company back in 2007, uh, which, which is called as Inmobi, where uh, this company became a first profitable unicorn in India. So Masa San from SoftBank, uh, he wrote the first check of $200 million to this company. And then I was there with the company for almost 11 years. I was turning 40 years and uh, I was like, okay, I need to do something for, for impact. <clears throat> I ended up choosing traffic congestion and air pollution to be my next mission. And that's how Yulu was born. Yulu is, uh, is a micro mobility service uh, where we are using electric powered vehicles, small vehicles, which can take people from point A to point B in the most environmental friendly manner. This topic is very, very critical and close to my heart. Uh, if you look at the problem around global warming and climate change, a good portion of that problem is contributed by mobility. And just to talk about the air pollution itself, a good one third problem of air pollution is caused by our very, very uh, bad behavior when we all of us are using cars, uh, where we don't have to even for smaller distance, etc. And we believe that this problem can be solved when we change our habits. So it has to start from us. And that's where the responsibility of individuals comes into picture. We are privileged enough to have uh, all the means uh, when we have to do an act, but it is important for us to take a U-turn in many of our habits, be it usage of maybe uh, the plastic uh, or, and certainly in, in our case, the usage of the petrol and, and the gas, uh, which is polluting the environment. Now, as far as the leaders are concerned, I believe that because no one will put a gun to your head, it is something which we need to do. But sometimes it is important that we bring some policies where we force or we incentivize people that you need to get to a better habit. And if we can have even role models, it will inspire the, the rest of the country and the rest of the citizens. In mobility case, particularly, there are good, you know, you can say role models in the form of uh, the mayor, the ex-mayor of London, uh, uh, Boris, who actually said that I'm going to use bicycle for my daily commute. And because of one act, a lot of things happen uh, in the city. And now cities has embraced uh, the sustainable mobility in a very meaningful manner. Same thing is happening in Paris as we speak. The current mayor of Paris, she is talking about a 15 minutes vision where one can be able to move from point A to point B. And, and, and this is what vision of uh, that city now. So they have taken off a lot of parking spaces for the car, given it for public spaces. The road space has been allocated for the bicycles and e-bikes etc and this is walking the talk in my in my manner and if i talk about india the government is very very uh, focused and and they are doing a lot of work especially around electrification of mobility by providing a lot of incentives for the buyer they are also doing a lot of work related to manufacturing where every manufacturer who is going to do electric mobility is given incentive and we believe that the by 2030, uh, the country will be changed significantly. Out of 30 most polluted cities in the world, India actually has 22 of them. So it's a crisis situation. And government has not announced that within one year, a plenty of the vehicles or majority of the vehicles which are being used by government officials, it will be all electric. Very similar to the announcement with our new president in the US has made that no matter what, I am basically going to fight it. I'm going to walk the talk and I will be the role model. So I'm very inspired and I'm very, very confident that the act of these leaders will not only positively nudge uh, many of us to change our habit. And then we collectively can take a U-turn fighting with this environmental crisis, which is ahead of us. Thank you.
No, that's it's great. I love hearing that the you know people following action over words, and I'd love to a little bit further once these introductions dive into how to approach people with influence and encourage them to perform actions uh, over just carrying a message, right? Because I think approaching influencers or celebrities to to help carry that in leaders is actually something that is a hurdle for many organizations like yours who are trying to make a big difference. Uh, okay, uh, next we have Rosario Angelo. Uh, from Pad 1925 Inc. calling in from the Philippines. Take it away. Hi, hi, uh, Cynthia and the rest of our panels and all listeners. Uh, of course, to Horaces. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you can just call me Ruel. Yeah, I, I wear many hats. First time, I'm I'm, I'm happy family man, and uh, we have one daughter. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm engaged in defense and security technology. I'm also uh, involved in uh, startups and uh, circular economy. And uh, fintech as well, and um, yeah, I worked with uh, with uh, several influencers in government, government leaders, and also uh, both both government and private institutions. And uh, I'm happy to be here and excited to uh, to hear from from the rest of the panelists and also listen to the questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, and and Christian uh, Schmidt, founder of PDI. Purpose Driven Innovation, calling in from Japan. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Um, so f first of all, PDI sounds also interesting, but uh, I pronounce it PDIE. It stands for Purpose Driven Innovation Ecosystem. That's an organization which we set up uh, two years ago <clears throat> in order to find and scale uh, sustainable uh, innovations and uh, find um, the best entrepreneurs, the best innovators uh, on a global scale. We start from Japan. At the moment, we are present in 10 countries. And um, yeah, so about the responsibility, um, we always have to think and we build communities. And first of all, it's, it's about ourselves. We have to go deep into ourselves and find the values we are attached to, we find our uh, life goals, our life vision, and that's defining each each purpose in the in the beginning of whatever you do in life. It's if it's your business, if it's your family, if it's a situation, um, it's always thinking about the why in the beginning. And if you have a certain set of values, then you can also find and attract people and build communities <clears throat> which uh, these values are aligned with. And uh, with everything uh, I have been doing in, yeah, over the time, uh, I have been in Japan for, since 20 years now, but uh, always with a global outreach and in different kind of functions. Uh, but my values have always been the same, uh, creating a happier society, uh, doing something for the planet, and um, also uh, contributing to a, a sophisticated higher culture so that, that everybody can enjoy and people can come together. And uh, uh, first, the first person speaking, uh, Sanford, he, he was mentioning polarization and he also mentioned the, the necessity of critical thinking. And at the moment, um, what I'm... Uh, thinking a lot about is our current crisis, our COVID crisis, actually. And um, I think uh, people might not really want to talk about it because it, it's really a, a kind of a dilemma uh, we are in. Uh, and I see many opinions from one side, but uh, I, I don't see many opinions from the other side. So if we want to change uh, something, how can we do it? Uh, we, we can find other people who ha have aligned values. And uh, one, one point which I specifically am a little bit concerned about in our democracies uh, is uh, the point of uh, a vaccine. If you, if you can basically get forced to, not forced, but there is an indirect uh, enforcement of, of a vaccine, uh, it should be uh, a freedom of choice, uh, even if, if they will introduce this digital passport, you have to have the choice uh, of getting a vaccine or not. 
So that, that would be one of my discussion points for today. And rather than that, the bigger topic than COVID is, is for me climate change and uh, the biosphere and what, what we are actually doing to transition into this circular economy. How, how do we change? How do we take responsibility? That, that's what, what I want to contribute today. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. And just to dive in on something that we spoke about uh, during during our, our first call was if when when the media tends to be swayed or influence tends to be swayed in one direction or one opinion, um, oftentimes when the opinion is to think for yourself or to um, to step back and make the choice for yourself versus one side or the other, it can actually place the influencer, the leader, uh, the athlete, the person who's carrying that message on the opposition. Um, even though that is not their intent. And uh, the question that I ask is, how can you or should you even approach a leader or someone with influence? Um, and this specifically, I think, is is a question for Christian, Sandy, and please, everyone else can jump in. Um, how do you approach someone that has a significant amount of influence? And is it, are they able to address the fact that choice is an option and it's not necessarily black or white, specifically in the case of, of COVID, if we're talking about having a choice as whether or not you want to get vaccine or whether or not you want to, uh, you know, send your kids back to school, you know, how can we approach the right types of people um, and help them and guide them at the right messaging? Can we even do it? I, I, let, I think there's another question that actually is embedded in that. It's not about getting people to take a position. We do that save the ocean, save the climate, uh, take vaccines, not, you know, whatever it is. But really, I've spent my life working with celebrity and influencers. And executives are no different. The, the time to engage is not when you have an issue. Ideally, the time to engage is when you want to shape them as people and help them grow into a position and a, 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 a sense of gravitas in themselves so that when they take a position, they're not taking it for profit. They're not taking it for um, political gain. They're not taking it because they think it's the popular thing to do, but you want people of influence to have great gravitas. You want to give them lots of information. You want to help them develop their own critical thinking and their own value system, even though that will be theirs and, and theirs alone. Once you have someone who sees things that way, then you're in a dialogue with them as opposed to using them as a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. We don't need spokespeople as much as we need people who are what I would consider the next generation of the elders, people who have the gravitas to influence, the Walter Cronkites, if you want to go back a generation, the Edward R. Murrows, the sense that Robert Redford developed his view of, of the of, of ecology and the natural environment at a very young age, or Mike Milken developed his influence in education while he was at Berkeley. You want people to actually feel humanity, and artists are particularly good at understanding the emotional connection with people, and also you they are also good at intuiting a lot of the issues that are inherent that other people have trouble articulating. And frankly, part of it is to influence people, but part of it is to motivate people to think critically, to have a sense of um, confidence in themselves, and to lay their hands on people and assure them that they can make a, a, a study of something and understand it and not be swayed by the noise and to step aside and not worry what people think. And it's them putting their arms around a child or an adult and saying, have confidence in yourself. Absolutely. And um, uh, something <clears throat> I think that, that ties back to that is, uh, Christian, you were saying we can't actually even have those discussions or even become the, the mentor or nurture someone to become the elder or the new leader unless we've identified ourselves what our purpose is. Uh, how do you and your organization tackle identifying what the purpose is before you take a message out to the public? Yeah, so we, we have been connecting with uh, the Earthshot Prize. This is this initiative by Prince William and Sir David Attenborough. 
And they, they look for these game-changing initiatives uh, to fix the climate, revive the ocean. And they, they have these five categories. And um, <clears throat> I, we have been collecting uh, a vast number of applications uh, through, through their website because we are one of the nominators for, for this organization. And what I came to one conclusion, which is that there is a thinking uh, which is more bound towards nature. Uh, what what San, Sanford is is your the right name? When you're when you're angry at me, it's Sanford. When you're not angry at me, <laughs> Sandy is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, okay, very good. Uh, there is one way which leans more towards nature. So the the orig original truths of our universe, the divinity of of things, where people create uh, something like agroforestry and, and they go back to nature. Uh, they try to uh, mimic uh, things which happen already in nature. And there is the other side of things which goes more to, towards technology, uh, machinery and industrial solutions, for example, carbon capturing and storage. And the health uh, discussion, um, I see a little bit similar and there is a term called 4P medicine, preventive, participatory, predictive. And um, I, I always forget the fourth one, but it's it's a more, uh, you don't get sick and get cured. Uh, you actually prevent your disease and you strengthen your immune system. So that that's, that's one uh, basic thinking. And uh, I have the feeling that, and I, I came from a, a, a background, I started my career in chemical companies, Bayer and BASF in agrochemicals. And I was surrounded by scientists. And what people, when people say, I believe in science, uh, they should really look at what, what it means, what they say. Because uh, science produces data. And then it's about how to look at this data and how to inter interpret this data. And yeah, so this discussion about vaccines uh, is very one dimensional uh, because there are actually a lot of opinions. There are professors, there are immuno immunologists, virologists, epidemiologists, which, which actually say that uh, developing a vaccine in seven months, it, it is a miracle and it has never been done. Uh, yeah, I, we, we don't know. And I wouldn't say yes or no to it. I, I also would encourage, like uh, Sandy said, this uh, dialogue and critical thinking. But we need to to bring this back to to the um, yeah to the public uh, discussion. That uh, in Europe, for example, uh, there there are no problems with with one of the vaccines. <clears throat> anyway, and and how to reach these people? Uh, it it comes. Are you more believing into the way of nature and the divinity, uh, which comes to this elders uh, thing, or are you more driven by uh, a technocratic worldview where you can fix everything with with uh, technology and um, data and machinery, or is there a, a middle pass between these two passes? That 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 could be. Uh... And, and possibly, is there another solution here where? You know, there's people who are getting the vaccine, they're posting pictures, they got the vaccine, and then they're getting, you know, sort of backlash for posting that they got the vaccine or they skipped the line or someone's copying their yeah. vaccination and, and, you know, the whole cybersecurity issue. Uh, who should should we be lifting up? What, who are the voices, the scientists just, that... Just on this point, let me do a 30 yeah. seconds because I have a public... Please, go you know, ahead. <laughs> I, look, I, I still advise the Harvard School of Public Health and I was on the board of the CDC. Um, right now, I think they are finding... I'm not sure what the issues are with the AstraZeneca vaccine is, but I will tell you this. We have variants of this virus right now that are so contagious that they will... If you draw the short straw, it's a horrible death. And right now, no one has died from a vaccine, and we will see how many variants that it's good against. But right now, in the absence of a vaccine and the absence of vaccination and the anti-vaxxer movement, which is not science-based, we will have uh, an unthinkable number of people die. 
And it is a horrible, horrible, horrible death. And nobody knows at what age the short straw is drawn. We have 500,000 deaths in the United States, and it is ugly to watch them die. And I will tell you, in California, we have an extraordinary California strain of this, which is extraordinarily contagious, and it basically does not allow people to be indoors together. Mm. And you've done exactly what uh, I think where I was headed is who are we supposed to be talking to, right? Because it's not the person who's posted their vaccine who is not a scientist. It's someone who just told us they worked with celebrities, but then dropped the bomb. that They also, you know, worked with the CDC and Harvard <laughs> School of Medicine. So it's a it's who are the people that can carry this message uh, from that perspective of, yes, you know, it was created quickly, but no, it's, you know, the I think President Biden said it best. He said when he was President Biden was asked, should should former President Trump speak to his supporters and tell him to get vaccinated, which, by the way, he did to his credit. Mm -hmm. But what President Biden said is right. Your ministers, your teachers, your leaders in your community, what you need those people to do is to exercise critical thinking process. And to Christian's point, if they disagree with the facts, then that is a debate because it should be fact-based. It should be research-based. But if what you're going off of is social media tweets and manipulations and opinions, science is based, science is not always static. The issue with masks was a good example. We started by saying no masks, and then we learned that we needed masks. But that is how we learn and we move forward in science. We work with the best information we have, and hopefully we are careful as to how we apply that. And to Christian's point of view, you don't want to leap too far forward because you can get into enormous trouble. But on the other hand, you also don't want to ignore facts. <clears throat> yes, yes, of course. But, but I, I also want to uh, see that uh, there is a, not only one solution. Uh, for example, there could be another solution, like, uh, and I think it's going on, and uh, there's uh, a lot of progress being made with actually treating this disease. And uh, it's, it's a tremendous progress which was made in one year. Uh, so the treatment can help. Uh, we had influenza, we had the Spanish flu, we came over it. Uh, now we are able to to treat treat it, um, and then uh, there could also be the possibility because if I'm not infected, uh, and and then I I don't infect other people as well. So uh, do I need a vaccine, or would it also be possible if if I uh, test myself and actually uh, show that uh, yeah I'm I'm not uh, infecting anybody. And I get to take it back to kind of the, the subject here. COVID has opened up a, a different kind of, of influence. It's almost decentralized influence to a degree where we're looking to people that we know who are similar to us for answers. And I, the question posed in the, the topic is, you know, how are we approaching our leaders? How are we using them as in discussion points and, and, or should we be? Um, and, and, if not, what is the alternative? How can we engage an entire community of people that can influence others, such as teachers, people on the front line? Uh, and, you know, for instance, for, for me, I know you're talking about transportation. You know, who who would you target as uh, someone who can influence a large group of people who are using the wrong type of transportation day to day? Yeah. So just to carry the COVID part, uh a disclaimer, I got vaccinated uh, and it was extra Zenska and I have no problem at all. I'm like thriving and surviving. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also know that uh, there's so many variants, so we cannot put our guards down. But I believe that after getting vaccinated, I am better off than not having vaccination for sure. And I've, uh, I've seen people even in India, they are sitting on the fence, whether they should be doing it or not. But uh, good part is, at least uh, in India, uh, people look at you know, big leaders and celebrities, and they have been using social media and the power of even 
mainstream media talk about that subject very widely. That includes our Prime Minister Modi, who himself got vaccinated, and his mother, who is uh, more than 90 years old. Even she got vaccinated, and the picture was taken and then shown uh, across the across the across the country. And I think you're right. Uh, ultimately, it's the responsibility of people who you know people look up to. And if we create a positive environment, that yes, this is better. And to Sandy's point, that it's a logic, it's a it's a thinking. It's not just perception, but facts. And unfortunately, uh, at least in social media. You know, people can also make perceptions and uh, create some kind of confusion. And that's where the leadership role comes into picture. As far as uh, mobility is concerned, in the context of India, as I was mentioning that uh, there are very, very important policies being made where there are budgets being allocated towards incentive programs to the, to the consumers and also for the manufacturers. But I believe that Corona actually gave the much needed push. I remember when we started Yulu, uh, you know, we used to survey our customers that, you know, you have to go from A to B. Would you care going in a ice driven vehicle versus a electric vehicle? 80 to 90% of those respondents will say that I don't care. As long as you are able to take me from A to B in my cost price, basically in my price point, I don't care. But the same set of uh, consumers, when I we go and, and have this survey, there is a huge surge in terms of respondents saying that, you know what, I will go for a cleaner mobility. And there's a larger perception and maybe reality also now they've seen the word how when COVID was there, how our environment became cleaner, our air quality. By the way, just for your information, the AQI in city where I live uh, or, or most of our big cities in India, they are more than 350 to 400. The moment it crosses 100, it becomes very, very bad. And mm. we live in 200, 250 AQI as if nothing has happened. And when lockdowns happen, we started seeing AQI of 30, 40. We started understanding, wow, there's a nature uh, which you know, is around us, the trees and and the birds and, and, and flowers and whatnot. So this Corona crisis also has given a very strong push in adopting sustainability in general, but certainly mobility is also getting better. And I've never seen that level of uh, goodness and, and perception change. Uh, and we certainly are looking at that this whole thing will take another five years, but because of Corona, uh, you know, we are seeing dramatic change. Just to let you know, while you know people have been talking about mobility companies, how beaten they have been. So you talk about Uber, Lyft, DB, you name it. We actually grew 2.5 times uh, during Corona times. People who were using uh, cars and and buses and and taxis, they started using Yulu. There were two reasons. I will not say that it was completely because mm -hmm. of sustainability. But because of also they were worried about coming in contact with some uh, co-passenger or a driver. So they were happy being solo uh, on their electric scooter and zipping across. Uh, so we think that instances like this or big policy change coupled with the fact that when the celebrities come, they talk about it. And people come and you know, thanks to social media, uh, we don't have to just go to Hollywood stars or Bollywood stars for that matter in India. We have now hundreds of thousands of people, people look up to. And we need to just go, um, uh, just inspire these guys. At least luckily for Yulu, if you go to Instagram, you do a, a tag word search, Yulu, you will see hundreds of pictures being posted every day. People on, 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 on our bike, just posing and <clears throat> of the country. So I think it is a time when most of us need to talk about why it matters and walk the talk because just talking is not not good enough uh, we need to walk the talk and 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 these things are not difficult you know it, it was in our mindset uh, we're not asking for a huge change huge favor we just do the right thing and collectively we will 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 be winning as a humanity yep. I think, sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I think I was not able to discuss my topic though <laughs> after the introduction. Yeah. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my main thing, my my focus is on the youth. So yeah, leaders both in government and the uh, private institutions and influencers such as uh, celebrities, athletes, and successful business people have a powerful impact, whether it's for the good or bad, or uh, how the youth uh, view themselves and how they see the world. As Erickson uh, puts it uh, on the stages of development, particularly for adolescents, our young people, just like all of us before, are in the who am I stage. They have this identity versus uh, role confusion. They are all conflicted with several values and ideas as to who they should be, what and how they should think, speak, and act. They experience trouble as to um, defining political, social, religious viewpoints, and to include sexual orientation. They are only in, the, in the stage of vulnerability. Spree, smoking, taking drugs, and social media. Yeah, they, they, they kind of normalize substance abuse in the eyes of the youth. Worst is that they make it attractive and cool as young people tend to idolize uh, their influencers. How much more, uh, you know, if uh, the leaders are, are speaking, you know, um, misogynistic acts or mis misogynistic values against women and objectifying women, this really influences Those that are that those that are uh, have implications that uh, impact us on the subconscious mind. Uh, if they all think about hatred, anger, cursing, all this uh, impacts uh, how the how the youth thinks. And same goes with body image. Now focusing on the positive influence, of course, uh, celebrities like uh, Rihanna and Jennifer. I do I did my research. <laughs> Sandy uh, and Jennifer Lawrence have spoken about. <laughs> Uh, how the entertainment and fashion industries promote beauty. And in, in our case, in our country, uh, there's, we have this Co uh, Coco Martin, a celebrity in the Philippines who have had a very difficult life, mar marred in poverty just like me before, who worked hard to be successful and uh, support their fa his family. Mahatma Gandhi's principled way of living, uh, who fought for independence through nonviolent means. Hey, if these are cool and our youth identifies with their leaders and these celebrities, if they can identify with the leaders who do good, imagine the positive impact to our youth of today. I remember when I was young, as I look up to our very famous uh, Rob, uh, basketball player, Robert Jaworski, the most, ba most popular basketball player in the country, and of course, the most popular ball club, Barangay in Hebra. During those difficult times in our economic life, I really idolize <laughs> Jaworski for his never say die attitude. He never gives up. And that's why I said to myself, I will never give, give up in this game of called life. As leaders and influencers, we are responsible for our own beliefs and principles in life, whether it be faith, political, personal, and others, and seek to understand and live it. But we are also responsible for, for all those whom we relate and contact with. Others, other responsibilities to be involved in society we live in as individual leaders and influencers. And societies can also influence the young, through social change, such as our country's peaceful people power revolution, that was a source of inspiration to so many countries and influenced me in particular, as I love the shared values of peace, freedom, unity, democracy, and respect for human life. May our thoughts, words, and actions influence more young people for them to become the best version of themselves. That's, that's, that's my take on it. Thank you. I, I would make one suggestion with regard to that because that's a very profound and, and, and deeply heartfelt statement. I think all people of influence should tell anyone who's listening to them, hear what I have to say, but then think for yourself. Talk to the ones around you. We should always couple what we say with critical thinking and encouraging people that their own views should come to bear. 
Uh, Richard Edelman at Edelman Worldwide Public Relations created the trust barometer. And what he showed many years ago was that people tend to trust people like themselves. We need to encourage at a grassroots local level critical thinking at that point. And by the way, all panels deserve, you know, a forward looking, um, what I would say, initiative. So my forward looking initiative for this panel is Cynthia's book. And Cynthia's book is the art and science of personal branding, which is very important when you look at, 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 <laughs> at, at local people. Cynthia, your next book should be uh -huh. how to build a personal life on your, how to build a purpose driven life mm -hmm. on your personal branding, how to convince people that their brand matters, that their voice matters, and that they should apply it to a purpose driven life and to community and to a broader, broader range of thinking. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And it's very helpful to, for where we're heading here in the end is uh, that, you know, the thing that we pay attention to is what gets bigger. And so we all have a responsibility to focus on the thing that needs to get bigger. And, you know, to Christian's point, knowing what you care about will help drive that. But maybe the, the way we can end this panel is what are you going to do, each of us, uh, you know, in the next year when things start to open up? To, to have a positive impact and to redirect influence in the right direction or the right ways or to use your audience and your influence to make a difference. And uh, so, so we'll start with uh, Rosaro. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Make a difference personally. <laughs> Do it. Ha. Sorry, sorry, Cynthia. <laughs> how, how, how are you going to use your influence to make a difference this year? Oh, yeah, I think um, it's, I start with my family and then my daughter spe specifically. I mean, mm -hmm. those nearest to me, closest to me. So, yeah, I live my life, uh, I mean, uh, more peacefully, <laughs> more loving and more caring for my family. And, uh, of course, for, for, those, uh, for those people whom I work with, is to always have that positive attitude, attitude considering this pandemic. And uh, especially in our country today, uh, there's so many uh, negativities that, that, is, that is happening. So I think uh, the best way is to always look, look forward and, uh, and uh, you know, tell, hey, uh, we will survive this. We, we, can, we can get over this. Uh, this is not the end. <clears throat> so I think that's, that's, uh, that's the best way I could, uh, I could, uh, I could uh, influence others as well. In my own little way, right. yeah. Amit? So as far as I am concerned, uh, I'm a very optimistic person, uh, <laughs> as every entrepreneur is. And I believe that uh, the set of things uh, which are already in motion, uh, particularly around mobility, uh, I want to make it bigger. Uh, I want to ride this wave, the tail tailwind which we are getting because of Corona, positive, and really focus on this activity. And this year, the goal is also to get some more policy decisions made. So, trying our best uh, to work with some policy makers so that uh, we just ride this wave uh, finally, while. It is a still a dream that we can have 15 minutes vision like Paris in, in cities like Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai. But can we have a 30 minutes vision? Uh, uh, you know, can we start with maybe a one hour vision? You would be actually very crazy surprised that for us to cover even five miles sometimes takes more than one hour, uh, sometimes two hours. So we have to take some baby step. But uh, uh, really, there are some good work happening. And... Uh, uh, I'm trying that how we can bring some leaders together so that they can say, okay, Bangalore also has a half an hour vision or Mumbai has the same thing. And then we will be at least as a better country and, and better cities ready for future. Christian, Sandy, which one of you wants to go? <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's, it's all very beautiful messages uh, uh, about family and uh, loving the family also pursuing your goal optimism optimism is is something which which i also buy into and if if i wouldn't be optimistic uh, i wouldn't do uh, many things i i'm doing right now and uh, yeah what 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 i want to do <clears throat> i want to keep on repeating 
my messages uh, keep on uh, finding the truth and and uh, living up to my values and uh, building the communities which which align with these values and then uh, we we have some concrete goals and, and measures which actually uh, there's also a film production so maybe uh, Sandy that that would be something which we can also talk about and uh, we are carrying out uh, the largest green business ideas competition uh, in Japan uh, we partner with the Earthshot Prize uh, and we have already finished the, the first year but um, <clears throat> and connecting with uh, some people who can carry that voice uh, in government in uh, celebrities also business leaders which which we connect to uh, that's that's one of the some of the uh, concrete goals to uh, transport and uh, facilitate uh, our messaging thank, thank you, you. Our, our time has elapsed but i'll make this very short and by mm -hmm. the way um the, the, always happy to collaborate on